Hey everybody, and welcome back to Love Bites. How's it going with our new guest, Jeff? Jeff and Control Robinson. Jeff, how are you doing today? I'm doing well, thanks for having me. Well, we're happy to have you. Sorry about the scheduling issues that have come up recently, but before we even start with the show, we must ask you what your professional qualifications are to do a Love Advice show. Um, well, I am a man, so that means, you know, we hold kind of the, the power of the universe and have to make all the choices. Uh, I'm also married, which means I think that makes me uh, the highest, well, close to the highest tier of, of knowledge in terms of understanding women So, uh, in relationships. So I feel like I'm pretty well qualified. I think those are the best qualifications anyone has ever had for this show, to be honest. Yeah, um, probably. Probably. Well, you can't beat that, so let's actually just jump into question number one. Dear Neil and Guest, I met a girl a few weeks back, and we've been seeing each other quite frequently. She's told me that she somewhat recently broke up with a boyfriend, and she wants to take things slow, which we've been doing. I've been honest with how I felt about her, and she told me she want, uh, how she felt as well. Recently, I was chatting with this other girl I've been seeing, and her roommate and her brought up her boyfriend hinting that, that they were still seeing each other. I was confused, and I talked to the girl I've been seeing and asked her what's going on, and she reassured me that they were broken up. For the next two weeks, we spent the whole time together, including me staying at her place a few nights. This last weekend, however, she told me she was going home. Then I see on her Facebook page that she went on a trip to Chicago with her ex. I feel very confused, and I'm not sure what to do. Ooh, Jeff, how do you, how do you handle this sort mm. of situation? I feel like he uh <clears throat> it's tough when you're when you're talking with a guy cuz either he left out details or there is no other details to be had like when he says he stayed over the night is that like she's explicitly like you're on the couch don't come upstairs or I'll fucking call the cops and shoot you in the head or was it I slept with her and then also when she says like I want to take it slow and she assures him that she's broken up but then on Facebook says she you know took a trip with her ex if that is all the details, then she's fine. That's uh, she was very explicitly clear that she's not. You know, when they say take it slow, that's that's girl language for like I'm not interested in a relationship with you. And then there's like a slash, and this is the part that every guy grabs onto. Maybe in parentheses right now, uh, right. but oftentimes it's like I would call it seventy five twenty five when they're like, when they said I'm you know I, I want to take it slow. That's usually them saying I don't really want to be with you. <laughs> <laughs> but that's why I'm saying, what are the details? Like, when he says, I've been, I've been with her for two weeks, is that, like, uh, I drove her shopping and then dropped her off, and she asked me to pick her up later, and it was awesome because I feel like I'm so useful? Or was it, like, you know, we were watching a movie together, she laid her head in my lap, we had, ended up holding hands, we kind of kissed, we made out a little bit. Like, there has to be more there. Yeah. Well, whatever the situation is with whatever might be going on that we don't have access to, I think the answer is kind of clear cut one way or the other is you ask her kind of point blank. No, you know, like she just said she's going home and if she goes home and hangs out with her ex. Yeah. Well, she went on a trip to Chicago. So I guess the thing is if she said she's going home and home is not Chicago and instead of going home, she actually takes off on a trip with her ex somewhere. Then there's like, oh, clearly she's yeah, I'm not sure which way it is. Maybe she went home, which is Chicago. or Maybe she went home to where she knows her ex, and then they went off and did something together. Like, you got to oh, figure out. If she lies, get the get the yeah. frog out of there, man. If she's especially if she's if she lies and then puts it on Facebook, then she really doesn't care what you think at all. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. If she's lying to you, this is a abandon all the sh abandon ship. Yeah. Get the hell out. Uh, pack your bags. Don't get, say goodbye. Just leave. And no need for a drama bomb either. Just no, like, no, no. It, drama doesn't help anyone. Well, um, it's. Like, I mean, if she was more like, you know, hey, yeah, I'm really interested in you and I want to, you know, let's start dating. And then like, oh, I'm just going home. But then on Facebook, it's like, I'm with the ex in Chicago. We went to Pound Town 17 times. It was great. Then maybe you drop the drama bomb. But she was pretty clear. She was like, no, nah, not interested right now. Yeah. It also seems like he's pretty interested in her, yeah. you know, and she's maybe with the whole I'm not want to take things slow. You might just be pressuring her too much. Maybe she's like, you know, if you've only been together for a few weeks, like. She needs to sort out shit with her ex. Maybe they needed to like go to Chicago to talk about things or just get away or try and become friends. Like you might want to take your foot off the gas pedal and stop stop yeah. putting so much of your own energy into the relationship. Like take it slow. Treat her as a friend. Yeah. Friend zone her until she's interested in being with you perhaps. And that can be attractive too if if you don't come off as desperate. 
I would say just blanket advice too is try not to get involved with girls that just broke up with their boyfriend anyways because more often than not the first breakup is not the actual real breakup like uh, it's like the bad disagreement but then the guy comes back or she goes back to him like you just you never want to be that guy that's like oh wow I'm with this girl I really care about she's like yeah sorry I'm actually going back to that asshole because yeah uh, I don't got a good reason I just kind of like him more than you and you're like well I feel like crap I'm gonna go die now and you're like okay yeah, yeah. I don't care <laughs> also side note good idea do not unfriend your friends or when your friend breaks up with someone don't unfriend them on Facebook you know that same day or within the same yeah. week when they get back together a week and yeah. a half later it's really <laughs> fucking awkward especially when you get invited to their Christmas party yes. and she just looks at you and then you have That's to have a big disagreement about why you unfriended her on Facebook in front of everyone. Yeah, was... and on a, on a similar vein, too, like, uh, this is more on the... I, I guess girls do it, too, but I remember uh, I've had a few friends do that same thing. Your your advice is right spot on. They break <laughs> up, and then the guy's like, dude, fuck her. She was a horrible human being anyway. She's ugly. She's terrible. And he's like, oh, yeah, you know, I guess so. And then a week later, they're together, and you're like, ah. Uh. Yeah. I'm happy for you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you gotta play your card, bro. We, I know how you feel. Like, <laughs> yeah, don't it's, do that either. Wait until you make sure breakups are sure, are a sure thing before you say anything, guys. This that yeah. one has bitten me in the ass on multiple occasions. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> great. Let's move on to the second question because I think we kind of killed that one. Hello, my name is Aiden. I hear you talk about love all the time, but I want to know how do you get over someone? My back, uh, some, some background. Max and I broke up sometime last year, and after a short attempt at being friends, we fell out of contact. However, she recently started texting me again, and some old feelings have resurfaced, even though it was clear she had moved on. So to restate, how do you oh. get over someone you used to love? Have you, have you heard of this thing called the Trojan War? Uh, it's like this big 10-year war that happened in Greece, well, between Greece and Troy, over this exact thing. Some girl's like, nope, I don't want to be with you anymore, I'm going over here, and a 10-year war started over it, like a real historical war. You you don't just get over things like this. People die over yeah. stuff like this all the time. I step number one, agree. just don't kill anyone, first off. That's, that's probably your first step. Um, other than that, dude, I would start investing in yourself. Not like financially, but Go to the gym, work out, do whatever it is that you like to do. Just really focus on that and and just obsess about yourself and improving yourself in whatever way possible or whatever it is that you like to do. Obsess about that and getting, you know, just, just focus, take all the energy that you used to put into the girl and put it into something else. And hopefully that'll get you somewhere. Yeah, best motivation for getting in shape is newly single. There's no, There's nothing that'll get you in the gym like that but oh, yeah. that's i feel like that's short term long term like girls will do that girls uh there's a famous well not famous but um, i guess famous there's a internet graphic of like guys that the first week they break up they're like you know totally fine and great girls are a wreck they cry for a week and then the, that week hits and then the girl is like oh totally over i'm fine and then that week hits for the guy and they're like oh my god these cupcakes remind me of her boobs uh you know and they're just a wreck for a long time depending on the relationship it can be you know months or even a year or whatever a year is a little bit much at that point yeah. you should probably pick yourself up by the bootstraps but uh one big thing for me is like if you break up with a girl and it's pretty for real um <clears throat> i try to do away with all the reminders of them like i i don't text them i don't call them i don't email them i it's not like you're gonna like pretend they don't exist, but you don't you don't subject yourself to the reminder and and that which hurts. So you just try to you try to put it out of mind. So I will unfriend them on Facebook or whatever it is. I'm not super Facebook savvy, but I don't need to see their update of like just met a cute guy and his dick's like 25 inches long. It's great. And you're, you're like no, no, don't need any of that. Um, and then when she texts you, it's not like you say like stay away from me. I hate you, but you don't like super reciprocate. You like hi, you know. Hope you're doing yeah. well. Hope you're doing well. Oh, you're you're moving on. You know what? I'm not quite ready to be friends yet. I need yep. another couple of months. You know? It, yeah, exactly. Do not if you if you still have feelings, don't try to be the the wounded soldier hero that just like shows up and is like, I'll be okay anyways, because guy like again, if you really care about that person, it's only gonna hurt you. And especially if the other person did move on, that is like the worst torture. Because they're just like, Oh, I'm great, you know, I've 
you know, and then they'll like to, to test the waters. They will do that thing. They're like, so I'm seeing someone, and then they'll be like, are you seeing anyone? And you're like, no, I'm a loner loser. So those feelings for you, and I feel terrible about myself. You don't yeah. say that, but you feel it. <laughs> so yeah. Just like give it space. Like Neil said, get your ass in the gym. Do whatever you like. Do hobbies. Uh, be around friends. Don't try to drink it off. That doesn't actually work. It just prolongs it, if not makes it uh, worse. It can actually yeah. increase the severity of how bad it can be. And just go have fun and work on yourself. Yeah, self-improvement is key to moving on yeah. from any sort of heartbreak or loss. Um, cool. I think that that's done. But now we got we got a big one here. All right, this is probably going to be Good. This, is, this is a long one. Okay. I'll try to explain as much as possible so you understand my situation slash problem. Not sure how to put it myself. Also, I'm sorry. I want to keep this as short as possible, but yeah, sorry again. So it start, all started out when I went out with some friends. I met this girl. She was on vacation. She lives in another city, and I noticed she was into me. It was kind of obvious. So we fast forward to the after party. She's uh, We both got drunk, and we had a blast. Me and that girl kissed, and she asked if I wanted to spend the night in italics. As a guy, I obviously thought she meant sex, but she pushed me away when I got a bit too intimate. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> and I'm a nice guy, so I thought it would be best to just leave it at that. The next day was great. We kissed, we cuddled, and it was awesome. Then I went home to get ready for work, and we kept texting and blah, 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 blah. Fast forward to the evening. I went out with a friend, got drunk. She texted me. I asked if she wanted to come meet us, and she did. Later that night, she said she started to get tired and wanted to ask if I want to spend the night again. And of course, I said, hell yeah, because I'm a guy. And you know the deal. But same thing happened that night. She pushed me away when I got too intimate. I didn't want to force anything if she didn't want to, of course. Good. The next day, we were pretty much the same, only that it was her last day of her visit, and she asked me to spend the night. But nothing happened. The next morning, I made her breakfast. We had we held hands almost all day. We kissed. We had this spark between us, and she left back to her city. We kept in contact, of course, and we've gotten rather close. She keeps telling me that she missed me, and I miss her. She called me when she was out with her friends and spent time on the phone talking to me, which, of course, felt like she really likes me. Correct me if I'm wrong on that. So far, it sounds like everything's great. You guys like each other, yeah. and she's just like holding off on the sex, which is fine. Anyhow, a couple of weeks after that, she tells me she's coming back to my city and she might consider moving here. And since my feelings started to grow for this person, I asked if that if she moves here, we could consider going on a date. Like, just have fun and we'll see where the night takes us. She said she didn't know what to do because she met a guy which was also from my city and she wanted to find out what she felt for both of us. At that point, I felt like it was her decision and so this is what I told her. Or, and that's what I told her. She asked me questions like, why me? Why do you? What, uh, what do you find so nice about me? Stuff like that. And I told her the truth. We have the same interest. I find her attractive. She's fun. So on. She went qu uh, quiet a while. Then she came here to the city and we met. And I told her that if she chooses the other guy, I'm not sure I can handle being friends because really, who can? Mm -hmm. Seeing someone you really like being with another guy, she understood and it went silent between the two of us. She chose the other guy and I just couldn't handle it. But I've never removed her from my friends list even though I really want to on Facebook. I mean, seeing pictures of how happy they are together is rough. Okay, so this is the backstory oh, apparently. Now we get to the current problem. Six months later. She contacts me, and I noticed they broke up, or rather they had a no relationship status. I understand that now she felt okay contacting me again. She told me that she moved back to her old city, and I were the first that found out about the breakup. We kept in contact, mostly through connection to music. She asked if I have someone in my life, and I've somewhat moved on, like I've been with other girls, but I just don't think of her. I didn't tell her that, though. And now, like a year after that, I still feel something for her. I can't seem to grow, uh, to grow feelings for other girls or women. Well, hopefully it's just women and not little girls. Uh, but the I problem know. is that she lives in another city and I would never consider moving there. I feel hopeless and I don't know what to do. If I told her the way I feel about her now, I'm somewhat afraid of losing her in my life. Like, we can't continue to be friends. I feel like we would rather have... Uh, I feel like I would rather have her as my friend than not to have her at all. And I don't want to see her with anyone else. <laughs> I know that's very selfish to think like that, but I don't know what to do. Just being honest. I know that feeling. Yeah, a common friend of ours got uh, curious and asked me what I really like about her because is she isn't really the most beautiful fish in the sea, so to speak. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest... Okay, now he's being super honest. <laughs> My God. To be honest, the looks is not really what interests me about her. It's just her, and she's funny and perfect to me. So yeah, I don't really know what to do. Any advice would be helpful. Oh, by the way, I've been seeking a therapist about this, but they have not really been all that helpful, just in case that was your advice. Much Boy. love. <laughs> Wow. So, 
What? I don't even know where to start with this one. Yeah, that. Um, it's interesting. Like the backstory is interesting because it's it's like a it's kind of like whatever, but for her to come back and be like, yeah, you know, I met another guy in your city as well, and 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 for him to kind of lay it out there and be like, well, you got to pick one, and I don't know if I could be friends with you. Then she picks the other one, but he's still like, well, I want to be friends with you. I don't know if I could not do that. You've already been kind of, you've been cold in a certain extent, to a certain extent. Like you, you, you laid it on the line. She was like, eh, shrugged. And then like, it turns out that that wasn't real anyways either. Um, and if she's been pretty obvious about wanting to just be friends, even post the breakup, and she only starts talking to you after the breakup. You're really just setting yourself up to get hurt in a really bad way. Because the other the, the hesitation I have is this guy's like this guy's interest in her, at least in the way it's written, sounds like almost obsessive. It sounds like there's almost an internal problem with the guy, like because he's like, ah, I saw a therapist about it and that didn't help, and I can't stop thinking about her, and I like her a lot, even though she's kind of trampled on you a couple times, not in like a terrible way, but just in a like a functional big wheel in the sky kind of way, like. Mm-hmm. She just didn't like you as much, and she didn't want to have sex with you, and she saw another guy and didn't care to tell you about it, I guess. Then she started dating that guy for six months. Like, you've, you've been friend-zoned kind of hard. Yeah. Now, I wonder, because he, all he says is, I've been speaking with a therapist about this. I wonder if he sought, sought a therapist for this mm. issue, or if he was just kind of seeing a therapist about something else and brings this up with them. Right. Because that is like two very, if you see a therapist specifically for this girl, that's one entire different issue than if you just have a therapist and you mention it to them. That's a good you point. Know? But I don't... I'm not... Hmm. Yeah, it's interesting. It says he saw the girls, just couldn't stop thinking of her. Um, it's not purely physical. She, he's, he's very clear about that. Mm-hmm. She sounds like a sweet girl, and I understand friendships. I understand that. But it, for me as a guy, like, it, if, if... And part of the reason why, like, when you do have a girlfriend, you're kind of nervous about uh, friends that are, that are guys for the girl is, is guys... To it, you know, genetically, we're programmed to like, I am attracted to you in one way or another, which means I want to procreate with you. And of course, you can separate that. You can have girlfriends, obviously. It's very much so possible. But like, I don't know. In this situation, it's like, if you're going to just try to be friends with her, but you already are at the point where you're attracted to her and want to be in a relationship with her, you're kind of setting yourself up to be hurt over and over again. And one of the best ways, you, you have to move beyond the relationship part. So for a lot of people, that means. They have the relationship, they get it out of their system, they find out it doesn't work, and then that's how they move on. But if she doesn't want to participate in that, then as a guy, the best way to move on is to be with somebody else or to excommunicate yourself for like whatever period of time you need to get over it. You know, and it doesn't sound like he's had either of those things. Yeah. He's been with other people, but he says he still thinks of her. It's been six months since they were in a relationship, and he, I guess he said he didn't talk to her, but he didn't remember from Facebook, and he still isn't over her. She's got her hooks in him. Yeah. So, oh God. The, feel, the way that I feel about this is that this guy, no matter what, like, if you're going to be honest with her, you're like, I have really, really been into you this entire time. Even when you've been dating with someone else, I am, like, head over heels in love with you. Yeah. That's how I feel about this. Like, you either have to go and just tell her, on the line. I, I love you, you're the one for me, no matter what, let's do this, and then just accept either go for it or abandon ship, or you just need to abandon ship already. That, yeah. I, it's a difficult thing to lay it on the line like that, and it, I, the romantic in me says you should do it because it, you know it's worth that one percent shot. But reality, you know, if you're this int- into her, and she's kind of like, well, I want you know, I was not that interested in with you before. Right. I went with the other guy. Now I'm kind of feeling this out again. There might be a chance for success there, but it's really low. You might want to save yourself the heartache and pain, and just avoid it, and just kind of be like, I you know what, this is that. this is just too much. I can't handle this shit later let's yeah. not even be friends because yeah, it, I, yeah, yeah i super agree with that because i feel like you either are in a place where you can be their friend or you're going to be in a relationship with them and it sounds like he he wants both he wants to either be in a relationship with him or be just good friends but as a guy i don't know that you can do both like you can't I, I, you, you can but you shouldn't you shouldn't want to be with someone and then reserve yourself to friendship that's like self-immolation that's just like watching you yourself can't burn around. do that it's not so lay to the work. line just tell him say hey i yeah. don't think i can be friends with you because i have strong feelings for you 
do you think you can give me a shot? And if she's like, I am nay, I like this other guy, then you're like, okay, hey, look, it's nothing, you know, it's just my feelings are too strong. I'm going to uh, yeah. step away for a while. Yeah. I would, that's exactly it. Just give her one big opportunity, tell her that you, how much you like her. Make, keep it short, keep it shorter than this email, like, you know, a couple lines. Like, <laughs> hey, I really, really like you. I think that I would like to be with you in some way. Um, if you want to, if you can try dating me, then let's, or don't say if you can try dating me, but you know, let's right. go out. If, and if she's like, I don't think that's the thing for me, be like, well, I like you too much to try and be friends with you. I'm going to have to step away. Um, and I'm sorry. Yeah. And it, you're going to want to, you're going to want to stay, be still be friends with her. As you mentioned here, but you're going to have to suppress that feeling. Cause otherwise it's yep. just going to be gnawing at you forever. It's, I've, I have been there. It is not a happy place to be. You, you do not want to be in that situation where you're pining after some girl who's not interested in you. Like, I think almost every guy's tried that. Because yeah. their hope is that if they're the nice best friend, eventually they'll be like, you know what, let's just get naked and make out. And you're, but it, never, it almost, you know, yeah. there are guys that have that story. It does happen, I guess. But there's for every one guy that that's the story, there's the other ten guys where it's like, no, actually they need you to pick them up from their... Their one night stands house. They're at a party. They're all over the other guy. You're the DD. Like it's just fucking a mess. Like yeah. don't do it. <laughs> I give it one more sure. try and then walk away, man. Just walk you away. Better and they're like, I know, right? But there's no good guys in the world. And you're like, uh, like, <laughs> I'm a good guy. No, no shut up. You're like my, you're like my brother. And yeah. Like, oh. There, there we go. Good luck, buddy. Uh, and be prepared to just walk away and leave it all behind and see our previous answers about like moving on and how to get over someone that you're in love with to help with that because that you're going to need it. All right. Next question. Hello, Neil and guest. I should press preface this by saying I've always suffered from social anxiety, which has gotten worse as I've gotten older. I met this American girl six years ago whilst traveling in Australia uh, and we became great friends and spent a lot of time together over the course of the year. She even spent three months living with me and a friend back home in Ireland. We've never had a physical relationship, but I've always thought we've had a connection. And I'm going to suppress my urge to read the rest of this in an Irish accent because I would butcher it and then you would come and kill me. <laughs> the last five years of my life have been rough. A lot of alcohol and depression and no relationships. I recently moved to Canada to start fresh and she came and visited me after six years we had an amazing time but we were never truly alone until last night we slept in the same bed and cuddled all night oh oh my god that's adorable it really is now i didn't want to make a move in case it made her uncomfortable and ruined her vacation so i left it alone which is probably a smart thing to do you know neil she is driving me crazy we chat every day since she visited but she's in the eastern u.s and i'm in western canada my question is, should I just try and forget about her, or should finally open up and tell her how I feel, but risk losing a good friend? Sorry for the long-windedness. It feels good to type this out, even if you don't read it. A socially anxious fan. Well, this is not long-winded compared to the last one, so you're good on that front. Right. Um, Eastern Canada, or Eastern U.S. versus Western Canada. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I mean, distance sucks. It really does, but... It's kind of the same situation in a, in a certain way. If you really have strong feelings for someone, uh, you got to lay it out there. You got to give it a chance because the worst thing that could happen is they say, is they gut you, is they're like, well, I I actually don't feel the same way. I'm sorry. I just like you as a friend. Um, there's varying degrees of that being nice or mean, I suppose. But you can take that. That's that's a bullet wound to the leg. You know, it sucks. It hurts. It'll burn if it's if that's the answer. Uh, but you will get over that. Then there's the other two ways you can do about it, or the other response, excuse me, and that's where they go, oh my god, I feel the same way, and then you're like, start, you know, that's actually LZ Gamer, a former teammate of mine, he needed that push, he was best friends with the girl, and I was like, and he had these feelings, I was like, fuck it, just go go say something to her, now he's married to her, so it's a good story. Then there's the, uh, you know, there's the other one, which is you hold these feelings inside yourself, you never say a damn word, and you hope that the girl makes the first move. That's if you're a gambling person at all or anything like that. Do not ever count on that. They they girls typically do not like to do that. <laughs> they they will make it very very obvious that they are interested in you and everything's okay. And if you don't make the move, you can run into problems. And that's that's why I almost I kind of cringed at that we slept in the same bed. Typically, and you don't again you don't necessarily have to have sex every time a girl's in the same bed as you. Like that doesn't have to be it, but. 
if you got feelings for the girl and she's comfortable enough to come visit you and then sleep in your bed, you can you can uh you can do the safe the safe feelers. Like you can, you know, you can uh, get a, scoot a little bit closer, you know, start to say, "Gosh, uh do you want a back rub? I don't I don't know." And then like she'll say no or she'll say yes. But there are feeler ways to see if a girl's interested in you. So that's why I cringe. It's not necessarily because you didn't have sex. It's because you missed out on an opportunity to see if she is interested in... Like, there are safety ways to go at it. And right now you're completely in the dark other than she came and saw you and slept in your bed. So I, I think there's a good shot. Yeah. If you guys had an, amu- uh, an amazing time and you slept in the same bed and cuddled the whole time, yeah. you know what, there... I would say there there is some int- there is some interest going both ways here. Yeah. Uh, it's not quite you know fly to New York or wherever she is on the East Coast and show up at her doorstep in the rain saying I love you be with me forever. <laughs> no, we're not there yet. But I I would schedule some sort of visit between the two of you at some point and when you're right. hanging out be like you know what I would do the, what Jeff was said and test out the feelers you know. Do the back back rub is like a f- terrific way because no girl is going to turn it's down a back rub unless she language. really doesn't want to be you touching right. her, and then you like depending on her reaction and how she settles into it and how just kind of the chemistry plays out, you can see whether this is like a very friendly back rub where she's like chatting about life and doesn't matter and you guys are having a conversation. Right. Back rub is kind of in the background, a bit. or it's the oh that just feels so good. Right. Uh, you missed that opportunity, and I I I would even suggest like before you schedule the visit. If you do have these feelings, now you gotta go. Now you gotta go to the the balls hard one where you just fucking lay it out in line, and then that's scary as crap. Because then she could be like, "Oh God, no, no, I'm not attracted to you at all. You're ugly as hell." And then you're like, Ugh! "You die a little bit inside, but at least you didn't spend money flying to New York to find that out in person, right?" <laughs> yeah. So I I would test the waters because it sounds like there's something here, and you yeah you should you should really go for it because it's worth it in the end, and especially if you find someone that you have this you know, chemistry with it, or after six years, you still want to hang out, and then you have a fantastic time. Like, this sounds like how my cousin got together with his wife. They met at a party, yeah. and then they met at another party a year later, and they met at another party, like, at a wedding two years after that, and they just hanging out and having a great time, even though they didn't know each other at all these different events, until they're finally like, well, shit, let's just date. And then they moved to the, you know, somehow they ended up dating, and now they're married. And there happy. You go. So, do it, man. Go for it. And good luck. Um, cool. We are two thirds done. Let's let's see if we can do this next one. Uh, by the Save way, the guys, when, when you send questions, please use font sizes larger than five. You know, twelve or ten is a very nice font size to use. Just someone used a five. I don't know. I have to zoom in really far to read this. I don't. That's it might awesome. be even lower than five. <laughs> You're getting trolled. Nobody writes in lower than five. What the hell? I don't know. I got this problem a long time ago, but I want to find out if other people have the same issue. Over the past few years, I've actually met one other guy who's experienced this, and we shared a lot of notes, but I don't know if we're the only two guys if there's a lot of us out there. There's probably a lot of you. There's probably a lot of you. I was in a very serious relationship. We talked all the time. It was constantly romantic and flirtatious, and we were very involved with each other. But given our different schedules and the facts that we lived apart, we communicated by text often instead of by phone. As time went on, there were times where I was talking to her and I'd bring up a previous conversation and she would seem confused and then would change the subject. Being obsessed by flirting and writing poetry for her and so on, I wasn't bothered bothered by this at the time, but when the relationship later ended in flames, I discovered that she was letting another woman she was close to talk to me under her name and getting off on it. Oh my god. Go on. The two women sort of shared me when they communicated by text and instant messenger and i was not aware at all i was compl- it was completely baffling to me when i f- found out because i couldn't understand how someone who was so close to me would essentially force me into a consistent intimate three-way that i wasn't even aware i was in well text-based three-way i guess yeah the other guy who had this happen thinks it's just women that who enjoy doing this are doing it because they're dishonest people to begin with so it's difficult not to fall into this trap it's just like it's difficult to know when you're being cheated on when you're not together all the time he also thinks that this happens a lot when the internet savvy people date and use instant messenger to chat when they can't use the phone. I'm not so sure. For reference, this woman and I had been talking about getting married. 
we had known each other for years and had been in a relationship for several of those years and I still don't know. I'm a pretty analytical guy, but obviously I was blinded by love. So what do you think? Is this a common problem? Should we men exclude instant messenger from our relationships so that these women can't share our kissy face emo uh, emoticons? Or should we assume this is uh, such an isolated problem that it's not worth having a strategy in place while dating? Say my name, I don't care, rooster. <laughs> I'm sorry to laugh at your misfortune, man, but this is not a common problem. No. And I think you can solve this problem by communicating in other ways than text. And if the person is only like, no, 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 I only want to text with you, something is fucking suspicious. So phone calls, visit in person, like even if you live long distance, you make the occasional visit. Like I, I just, yeah. I, I, don't, I don't, I am kind of baffled as how, how you got here. This to me is just the world of like online dating. Like this shit happens. There's, there's, you know, my buddy is way into online dating, and there's fake profile pictures. There's, you know, uh, people lying about stats or relationships, that kind of stuff. That's fine. It's all digital based. And then this is, you know, people were talking. They're dating online, essentially, and uh, they, you know, apparently you you let it get to the intimate, text based part of the relationship. And, uh, yeah, I guess this could happen. I don't know. In my opinion, again, without this experience, and most people won't have this experience, I wouldn't feel too bad. If you're, if you're at the point where you're, like, severely emotionally um, invested in a person, then you should have met at some point before that, in my opinion. Or you should have, you know, Skype chatted with video or something. Something beyond just emails and text. And if it isn't that, if it's at the earlier stage... And you just jumped into sexting or whatever you want to call it with someone. I don't know how hurt can you possibly be. Like that's that's a uh, that sounds like the two of you went pretty quick, and then one person's a bigger freak than you are. It turns out, but you guys are both still like, "Hey, I like you. You're attractive. Cool. I like you. You're attractive." I unzip my pants. Like <laughs> that got that got pretty that escalated really quickly. Uh, but if this is like you know, so that's that answer. If this was a person you guys met a bunch and you've been dating for a while and you scheduled trips and she's like, you know, got caught red handed. Oh, by the way, my friend gets off on pretending to be me and messaging you. I'd feel a little bit betrayed and weirded out. I'd be like, okay, well that's fucked up. Like I didn't, you know, I don't know. It's, it's not the same as doing it in person or something like that, but it's still pretty messed up. I'd be disturbed. Yeah. I don't know if this is a situation where like, because you met, he mentioned he was writing poetry and being very flirtatious and maybe this started as like some sort of online thing and he starts writing poetry and being flirtatious. And the girl's like, oh my god, this guy is like making me hot and bothered. So-and-so, read this. And they both like turn it into a game where they're both getting off on whatever you're saying because you're really good at arousing them. In which case, it's kind of a hard way. I don't necessarily want to say just take it as a compliment. They really liked you. But like, right. there is clearly some sort of dishonesty that started from the beginning in order for this to get here. And you're, apparently you're very good with your words. <laughs> just You should, you know not just rely on the words poetry is great flirting is great the fact that you that you are so good with your flirting and your poetry that a, a girl that you were interested in had to share you with another girl because you were too much for them to handle is a great thing just yeah. be a little bit more focused and aware of how you write and where you're writing and people's responses in the future you, it's not i don't think this is something you need to have a plan for and maybe you throw in there if you think i'm good with my words wait till you see what i can you do know, with my fingers you know what i'm saying yeah word Maybe not just that, but yeah. Well, you start with fingers. You know, you you build up. It's it's not a it's not a sprint. It's a marathon. All right, next question. Dear Neil, I'm the guy whose girlfriend went to China and supposedly tried to get her to buy me a computer. This was not the case. I tried to get herself to buy a computer. All right. So this is a follow up from a question we talked about two weeks ago. Um, apparently we either misread the email or it was miscommunicated in some way. But we'll let's finish through this. I was embarrassed mm -hmm. and offended that you presented me that way, <laughs> but, on, I have no. <laughs> but I've later come to realize I shouldn't value my life on this single event, so no hard feelings. Despite how you read my letter, no hard feelings. despite how you read my letter and how late you responded to it, I took wow. to heart the things that you and Justin had said. The whole affair with my now ex-girlfriend was a big mess and still kind of is. I've distanced myself from her. What happened was we broke up the day before she went to China, and I cried the following week. I tried to contact her, and had, and we talked a you little... You noticed that? The following week, Neil. 
the fall. Yeah, I am, I am a master of these things. Yeah, she, I tried to contact her and we talked a little. She just wanted to forget me, and I resented that, and so I was determined to ignore her. Two weeks after the breakup, she calls me and said the whole breakup was a mistake, and she wants me back. I tell her that can't happen as long as she's in China, so maybe when she gets home. At this time, I'm seeing another girl. I haven't done anything with her. Wow. I'm not a complete douche. This guy moves fast. Just by itself, I'm not a complete douche. No no commas, no adding on to another sentence. Just, by the way, I am not a complete douche. Okay. Three days after my ex and I start talking, I say some nasty things. And the day after, she finds a new guy. A week later, she tells me this, and I haven't been able to talk to her since. <laughs> God, it's like going to a movie. I got dumped the other day by the girl I was seeing, and now i found another. This makes me come over as an asshole, but I have a great Gabe in my chest. Gabe in my chest? Gabe. I have a great Gabe in my chest, and it hurts so much. I'm I just want to draw the chest, pain. I think. I think so, but I'm just picturing a large Gabe Newell in his chest, like, oh, let me go. <laughs> Steam. It's <laughs> coming out of his ears. Ooh. Yeah. I just want to drown the pain. It feels like I can't breathe and that I'm about to cry at any moment. I don't know if this girl is a rebound or if she's the real thing, and I'm sorry for laughing at your misfortune, but the imagery is funny to me. You said, uh, I know you said you did a lot of StarCraft stuff when you and your current fiancé had broken up before. How did you deal with the pain, and how well did you deal with it? How did it affect your days after the breakup? I'd really like to know from someone who's been through a similar, uh, similar thing. Sincerely, yours, Scouty. P.S. I will get back to you in six months when this whole affair is over. Well, buddy, you know what? I just you gotta you gotta forget it, and you gotta find that thing that drives you and makes you happy, and that thing that you want to do with your life, and then you just obsess over. Or at least that's how I deal with breakup. Like when I've been in like heartbreaking situations or in painful situations, I tend to wake up in the morning, feel bad, push all my pain down deep inside me work my ass off all day long until I'm so exhausted I have to go to bed, crawl into bed, and then be depressed until I fall asleep. Like, that's my technique for dealing with this. And then over time, the periods of depression while you fall asleep just get shorter and shorter and shorter and shorter and shorter. I don't know if it's healthy, but it works for me. Um, so obsession and pushing the pain down deep inside. It's probably not the best way, but it, it's worked for me. So, <laughs> Jeff, how do you deal with heartbreak? Um... Well, it's it's interesting because it his story is interesting. Like, I think he's like three girl, or two girls removed from this ex, but he's like he says he's on the verge of tears and crying, uh, for, you know, like forever after that. And he's way into the. It sounds like he still has feelings for this girl, and seeing other girls is not really covering up for that, because that is one of the ways you deal with it is you move on and have other relationships. Um. But they also sound, I don't know, it could just be the writing style or, you know, our interpretation of what was written. But he's like, then she found another guy and I and she's like, this is all a mistake. I want to be with you from China. And he's like, no, we can talk about when you're back. And then they never talked about it. And it's just, uh, it sounds kind of like, first of all, like, this is like, if there's anything people can take away from this, do not talk to your exes, people. Please do not talk to them. Um, give it some time and then talk to your exes. Like, you are a mess when you guys just got done breaking up. You're both doing weird things. She's seeing another guy. You're seeing other girls, but you're still crying about it. Uh, it's it's just like this is not the situation for a person to make emotional, like emotionally sound choices. You're going to make emotional choices, but not emotionally sound. And you've heard us talk about this before. Go work out. Go do other things. You know, go play games that you like like work on yourself just be a good person uh make yourself a better person even but talking to them texting with them talking about relationships talking about when you'll talk about things like putting a timeline on when you're going to come back to talking about your relationship even that's kind of weird um i know it's kind of hard but like guys one of the most attractive things you can do for a girl uh that you're going to be with or not is is to be kind of con like confident and and uh secure like when she's like it's it's wrong we should be together oh my god and you know and he's like he said part of the right thing he's like no we're not talking about this while you're in china he should have said he should he should have been like you know what take this time to send yourself in china i'm gonna do some soul searching when you come back if you want to talk we'll talk then but you know i'm not getting back to you but i'm not getting back with you now mm -hmm. and then she's like oh my god he's so confident and he's like you know and then and then that's attractive and maybe there's a chance 
or maybe uh, there's not, and it, your time has moved beyond. But but when you dwell on it and put like, well, we'll we'll talk about it in three months, and and everything in between now and then is just going to be pain and hurt. You're going to have that pain and hurt for six months or three months or whatever. Timelines are bad, man. Just and they're artificial. It doesn't work that way. They they really don't. I I tried that actually when my fiance and I broke up many years ago. I a couple like a week later, as Jeff said, I was kind of like, well, maybe this was a mistake. Maybe we shouldn't have broken up. Mm-hmm. And she's like, no, we should probably you know keep it going. And I was like, all right, cool. But what if we are interested? You know, maybe in like three or four months we could revisit this. And she put her foot down. And was like, look, we can revisit this at some point in the future if we feel like it. But I'm not putting any timelines on it, which was a fantastic idea yep. because. For the first like month or so, I was like, okay, three months, we're going to get back. I'm, I'll just talk to her in three months casually. It's going to be fine. And I was driving myself insane by that timeline. Like, the, right. okay, it's been three weeks. Cool. We can like talk another. Uh, and then after like a month of that, I was like, you know what? This is, this is ridiculous. I'm just going to do my thing and completely try and move on from her. And it uh, cheapens everything else you do when you put that timeline on. You know, what are you going to see somebody else? Well, whatever. You're talking to the person you actually care about. And now yeah. two months and 17 days. Yeah, Anna yeah. and I broke up a couple times when we were first dating, and it wasn't until like we we got back together each time, but each time we we had healed and moved on and learned a little bit, but we still had more to do. So we hit that next wall, things wouldn't work out, and we'd break up. Uh, but it was kind of like it it was the, these issues over again. Like I would still be like, well, I'll be your, you know, I'll be your friend. Like I'll just you know, I'll, it's okay. I'll try to hide these feelings and fucking murders you. And it sucked too because I was friends with her brother and her her best friend. Like we had the same friend circle, so we we did this thing. It wasn't until the last time that we broke up where I was like, no, actually, like I can't. I it hurts me. I'm I still like you. I can't do this. Or I have we have feelings, you know. So we didn't talk actually for like six months or something like that. Not at all. And uh, we we both found our souls and and worked on ourselves and we matured and got our past out of the way. And then when we came back together, it was. It it was for keeps. Now we've been together for yeah need longer than this. I can remember. <laughs> Till the beginning of time, it's been a long time. It's been you know a long time. Yeah. So girls in China, again, just try and move on. And if she comes back to the states and gets in touch with you, and then you hang out, maybe then you can explore this. But don't count on it. Don't expect it. Go forward. You said you're seeing someone now and that you don't know if this is a real thing or not, but you're spending all your nights crying about the previous girl. This, this current girl is not the real thing. If you're actually still like crying at night because of someone else, the person you're with, you probably don't Bro, feel so yeah. strongly about. Like that, and it's kind and of a just no-brainer. On a human level, like please be honest with them and help them out. Yeah. Like, you know, if you're lying in bed, why are you crying, honey? And they're like, oh, nothing. You know, it's like, I come on. I just love like, you so much. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, take some time, focus on yourself, forget about the dating, dating is not your primary goal in life, you know, it, it, it's a secondary goal that you will, uh, that you, it should be treated as a secondary goal, because if you treat it as a primary goal, it's going to fuck you up in the head, so you treat it as a secondary, a high priority secondary goal, at least that's kind of how I've done it, it seems to work. Um, good luck with the China girl, I, stay away. Don't talk. Don't don't discuss things. You'll you'll be fine. Yeah. And see our previous comments about how to move on. Um, Self improvement is amazing. Starcraft is a great way to move on. It's helped me, even if I'm now stuck in platinum <laughs> or gold. Actually, God, that's so embarrassing. You gotta be honest with yourself. Oh God, I don't want to. I don't want to. Anyway, <laughs> dear kneeling guest. I will start by saying thank you for the show. Has some I've had some relationship troubles in the past and unfortunately only found the show after my most recent breakup. I am a hetero male currently in college. Since my last breakup in February, I've taken a step back and worked on improving myself. Oh, well done. Now I feel like I'm ready to get back into the dating scene, but I don't know where to start. Question, where and how should I start looking for a potential girlfriend? Thanks, Anonymous. Hmm. <laughs> well... <laughs> Uh, I recommend Home Depot, and if you don't have one of those, um, maybe linens and things. They say it's something like 50% of the relationships, I don't know how they could ever get the number, but a lot of the relationships are found at your workspace, so wherever it is that you work, you know, just kind of go out with those friends. Uh, Gym's a good place. You know, the natural 
historical thing that everyone says is go to the bar, but I find that to actually be oh, one of the worst that. places to find a girl. Never find someone at a bar. That's a, Yeah. Go out with friends when they're like, hey, we're going out to such and such movie, we're going out dancing, whatever. Always go. Uh, put yourself out there. And if all you know, give it some time too. Don't force things. There's nothing more unattractive. Well, that's not true, but it's really unattractive to be the pushy, desperate. I just, I'm, I'm ready to date guy. He's like, hey, you're a girl, you're attractive. What's your name? What's your number? What's your social security number? Where do you live? I'll just pick you up tomorrow. Fine, I'll see you. Let me have some of your hair. You know, like that's, that's not going to be the, that's the guy that doesn't get dates. Uh, just be confident, like you said, you've worked on yourself. You're good. Hang out with friends. And if it's slow going, which does happen, or maybe your cer- social circle is uh, a bunch of nerds that don't actually hang out with girls, which also does happen, um, then the online dating stuff is pretty fantastic these days. And I mm-hmm. recommend going to a paid website as opposed to just the free ones because like Tinder and shit, don't do that. That's just silly. Yeah. Also, I find that when, I, when I've been in like girlfriend hunting mode, it's kind of obvious and that when I'm in I don't need a girlfriend mode, girls are more attracted to me. It's it's the sort of thing like as soon as you start dating someone, all the girls that you were interested in before but who weren't interested in you are now interested in you. Like you become more attractive when you are not looking for someone sort of thing. I have thing. so many theories on that though. Part of that I think is that girls also feel a sense of security with a person that is involved in a relationship because they on some level think that now they're around a guy that's cool that isn't necessarily going to try to get in their pants. But then the other 50% or some arbitrary number around that is girls like the idea of kind of the winning over a guy that is with somebody else. Like, and, I, it, and it goes reverse as well, obviously. Only yeah. guys are a lot more receptive to both as opposed to being the deciders like girls are. I also think when you're with someone you just and you're not looking, you kind of exude a natural confidence and a natural like nonchalantness around right. other girls. You're like, yeah, whatever. Oh, hell yeah. You can have a conversation with someone and your brain's not like, ooh, are they interesting? Might I date them? And you're not thinking about them. You're like thinking about the conversation and that, that sort of just relaxedness is really yep. comforting. So I would say just if you're looking to date someone, do what Jeff said. Hang out with your friends. Go out to places where you might meet people, like event things that you're interested in. You know, you you like esports? Go to an esports event. Go to MLG Anaheim. Hang out there. You'll find some people. You you meet some people. You might meet a girl that you hang out with and have a good time with, and then you move that into a, a relationship. Like, it's not so much a stalking for a girlfriend, like in the bushes, and then you see one, and your friend goes over there, and you throw a net, and you leap on her, and you try and like get the net closed before she can run and escape. Like, we're it's not quite girlfriend hunting. You right? Just relax, man. You you need to get out there and do this stuff, but. Take your time. Do something you're interested. Go to places where you might meet other people who have similar interests with you. Um, if you like sewing, go to go to a sewing circle. If you're really into literature, go to a book club. If you really like video games, go to your local gaming store or an esports event or whatever. You know, that sort of thing. You you'll find people with similar interests, and then you'll naturally find yourself getting involved with other people. Just be yep. as social as possible. Get out there. And um, do you have any last words on this before we wrap it up? No, this, that's good topic? for me. All right. Well, that is our one hour of Love Bites with our guest, Jeff. Thank you so much for coming on. Your opinion yeah. and viewpoints are refreshing because we've had so many other people who are much more cautious or much more oh. focused in one area. You, you have a very fresh viewpoint that we haven't had on in, many, in a long time, not since Ryan's been around. So thanks for doing this. Do you have any, sure. any last words? For people, uh, any shout-outs? No, you know, just, I think, like I said, uh, I think one of the things we can take away from this a kind of common theme throughout all the questions was, like, when you break up with someone, actually break up with them. Give yourself time. Uh, take a, take, get out of the whirlwind. Go work on yourself. Let them work on themselves. And if it is going to come back, uh, give, it, give it some time. And don't be, you know, don't be desperate. And if you have feelings for the person and try to be a friend with them, you are setting yourself on fire. I think both emotionally and probably physically on some level. Uh, but no, that's it. And thanks for having me. It's a lot of fun. I like talking about this stuff. All right. Well, maybe we'll see you around sometime again. Absolutely. Okay. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.